Okay, so in today's class, we are going to attempt a past exam question from uh, March, June 2024 attempt. And uh, the first question I'm reading, the scenario relates to four requirements. It is 1st July, you are an audit supervisor with t Company. So t Company now becomes the audit firm because you're an audit supervisor of t Company, which has recently been appointed as auditor to Green Company. And you're planning your first audit, which will be for the year ending 31st July. This is your first audit. Green Company sells a variety of plants, garden equipment, garden furniture to wholesale customers and to retail customers via a network of stores. Companies was formed 13 years ago by Aiden White, who is the CEO and is the company's only shareholder. Aiden is planning to retire within the next year and is intending to sell his shares in the company. So it is 1st July, you audit, audit supervisor with Teal, which is the audit firm. It has recently been appointed. This is your first audit. Green sells a variety of plants, garden equipment, furniture, and company was formed 13 years ago by Eden White, who is the CEO and company's only shareholder. He plans to retire and is planning to sell his shares. Audit partner has had a meeting with Eden White and has advised you of the following. In August 2004, the company began to refurbish the retail stores in order to incorporate cafes into each one. Refurbishment costs of 14.2 million were recognized with property, plant and equipment and this was partly financed by loan of 10 million, which is to be repaid in five equal installments commencing in September. In November, Green spent 400,000 on an advertisement campaign and the cafes were opened in December. Advertisement expenditure has been included within intangible assets and is being amortized over 24 months as Aiden White expects the advertisement to generate additional revenue for that period. In May, Green received notification that the building authority had received a complaint that refurbishments had not been performed in accordance with building regulations. Building authorities currently investigating and if found to be breached, Green would be required to remedy any deficiencies in addition to paying a fine. Green sells a range of tropical plants. In August, Green began a project to develop new technology for maintaining the correct temperature and humidity in its greenhouses. Project is expected to be completed in August. Green has incurred costs of 350000 which are recognized with an intangible assets. In May, a flood caused water damage to inventories, which had cost of 425 Company believes plants can still be sold, but at a reduced price of selling price. Financial statements are expected to show revenue of 88.2 million, 2004 was 85, gross profit of 23.3, 2004 was 16, and operating profit of 6.3, 9.4 million. As part of your planning, you have calculated the following ratios, gross profit margin, net profit margin, and receivable days, okay? Alan White has attributed the increase in receivable period to the absence of a credit controller who has been on long-term sick leave since April. This is the scenario. We will read it slowly when we will be doing the question. However, apart from the scenario, describe eight audit risks, auditor response to each risk. This has been a very normal requirement that every time audit risks and responses are being asked. So let's just find some audit risks and then responses, okay? Okay, so, you know, in always questions, there are some very easy risks, some risks are difficult. So we find the easy ones and then we try to find the other ones. Okay, so the first risk, it is 1st July, you are an audit supervisor deal, which has recently been appointed as auditor. You are planning your first audit. First year of audit is a risk. Yes. What is a risk? There is a risk that audit firm may not be able to identify any misstatements or errors due to lack of understanding of entity okay but i told you either you have to write overstated understated or inherent control detection risk leading to increased detection risk okay remember the response Obtain detailed understanding of entity through discussion with management, inquiry,
in addition experienced team members shall be assigned on audit of green company okay so whenever there is a risk that uh, you may not be able to identify misstatements or errors due to lack of understanding of entity. So there is always like that uh, you obtain detailed understanding, discussion, management, inquiry of staff. Experienced team members shall be assigned to the audit. Okay. Second. The company incurred refurbishment cost of dollar fourteen point two million and included them in PPE. there is a risk that this expenditure is incorrectly classified between capital and revenue hence PPE may be overstated. Okay, they have included this expenditure, research and development expenditure, refurbishment expenditure, and PPE. So there is a risk that this expenditure is not properly classified, whether it's PPE or not, capital or revenue. Hence, you have included them in PPE, PPE may be overstated. Response. Obtain. breakdown of invoices to assess nature of expenditure if capital ensure it's capitalized and if revenue ensure it is expensed to PNL right so this is about refurbishment expenditure. <laughs> the company, very easy point, took out a loan of dollar 10 million there is a risk that this loan is incorrectly split between current and non-current liabilities hence liabilities may be misstated as I told you in the lectures, either you read to write inherent control detection race or in overstated and understated, misstated should be avoided unless there is both possibilities. So since uh, there is a risk that loan is incurrently split between current and non-current, so liabilities may be misstated. Current, non-current may be over-understated. You can write over-understated or you can write misstated. But uh, over, over slash understated or misstated should only be written when you are sure, uh, unsure. If you're sure that something has to be overstated or understated, you need to write that. Otherwise, you won't get marks. Like here, they incurred uh, the refurbishment costs in PP. So PP may be misstated, won't gain you marks. They have included that as PP. So PPP will be overstated. Examiner wants that either you write overstated or you write understated. He doesn't allow you to write over slash understated or misstated that your both legs are in the boats. No. He said that you need to understand the concept that either write overstated, either write understated, okay? Because uh, misstated diplomacy 
or over understated diplomacy that's only allowed when you have uh, both options open so since they have included the expenditure as pp so pp may be overstated had it not been written and the company only incurred refurbishment cost of 14.2 million nothing was mentioned where they didn't do that then you can say there is a red that this is incorrectly classified hence ppe and expenses may be misstated or over slash understated but since they have included them as pp there is a risk that ppe is overstated okay similarly to cato loan risk that loan is incorrectly split between current non current liability so liabilities may have been misstated had it been written that company took out a loan of 10 million and included as ncl non current liability so you can write that since they have included them as ncl ncl may be overstated so write exact either overstated either understated both over slash understated is only allowed or misstated is only allowed when you have both options open remember the response of this the audit team shall ensure that 10 million loan was actually received an addition split between current and non-current liability shall be reviewed and it must be ensured that all disclosure of loan are in accordance with standards. Okay. So you can write these three so that I have space to move forward.
Okay, let's find uh, further easy ones. Remember from the audit risk and responses last class, the ratios topic, he has given you some ratios. The receivable days have increased from 40 to 67. Receivables are paying late from 40 days. And uh, 2004 was 40 days. And now they're expected to pay in 67 days. Remember, this was an audit risk, inventory days increase, receivable days increase. There is a risk of recoverability of these receivables. Hence, receivables may be overvalued. Receivable they have increased from 40 to 67. So remember the risk, there is a risk of recoverability of these receivables. Receivables may be overvalued. Remember the response. Do detailed testing of poor year end. Cash receipts and review aged debtor analysis to assess valuation of receivables or to ensure receivables are properly valued. Okay. When receivable days have increased, risk of recoverability. So, due to detailed testing of post year and cash receipts and aged debtor analysis needs to be reviewed to assess valuation of receivables. Okay. Another easy one, a flood caused damage to inventories. And company believes inventory can be sold at reduced selling price, okay? So inventories were damaged, okay? When inventories are damaged, there is a risk that inventory is not properly valued as per IS2, hence, Inventory may be over slash understated, misstated. You won't gain marks here. You have to do it exactly either overstated, either understated, unless there is both possibilities. Okay. So a flood has caused uh, damage to the inventory. So what is the risk that flood has caused damage to inventory? So inventory can be sold at a lower selling price. So there is a risk that uh, inventory is not properly valued as per price too. Hence inventory may be overstated or overvalued okay your inventory is damaged it can be sold at a reduced selling price there is a risk that uh, you have not properly valued them at the lower selling price so inventory seems to be overstated okay and remember the response Okay. Flood has caused damage to inventory and it can be sold at a lower selling price. Okay. So risk that you have not incorporated at as per IS2, lower of cost than RB. Hence, inventory is overstated in financial statements because you have uh, damaged inventory, can be sold at a reduced selling price. What is the risk? You have not incorporated this as per IS2. Hence, inventory is overstated. You cannot write over slash understated or misstated. You won't get marks because that's very clear that when inventory is damaged and you don't incorporate, your inventory is overvalued. Okay.
I can see another very straightforward risk. The company spent 400,000 on advertisement and has included advertisement expense in intangible assets. Okay, so advertisement expenditure is an expenditure. They have included them as intangible assets. That intangible assets are overstated and expense understated. And you can write here advertisement expense is an expense should be recorded in expense there is a risk you don't need to write there is a risk uh, sorry advertisement expense that expense should be recorded as expense this is unnecessarily prolonging the statement but I am here for practice I don't have the shortage of time like you guys have in the exam so you can write the statement as well and you can skip this as well company spent 400,000 in advertisement has included its intangible assets there is a risk that intangible assets are overstated because you have included them as intangible assets so intangible assets are overstated and not charge them as expense so expenses understated okay not misstated or over slash understated because it's very clear that you have included advertisement expenditure in intangible assets so intangible assets are overstated and expense understated response would be very easy because this is a wrong treatment discuss with management and ask them to include advertisement expenditure in expense rather than intangible asset okay so now write these three i will then move towards the last two we have gained 12 marks and uh, it seems again very straightforward things
Okay, now we are in search of last two risks and uh, obviously reading the question gives an idea that uh, in May, Green received notification that Building Authority had received a complaint that refurbishment had not been performed in accordance with regulations. Building authorities investigating and if found in breach of regulations, gain would be required to remedy and pay a fine. The building authority. Is investigating. A breach. And. Company may have to pay a fine. You know, when investigation going on and you have uh, to pay a penalty or fine or a legal case is going on and you have to pay a fine or penalty, you need to make a provision. There is a risk that provision has not been made in accordance with IS 37, hence provisions may be understated. You have not made provision. That means provision are understated. And response, discuss with management and ensure all provisions are made in accordance with IS 37 or review adequacy of disclosures to ensure they are made in accordance with IS 37. So whenever, whenever there is a legal case or an investigation and you may be expected to pay a fine or penalty or legal amount, you should always make a provision. Whenever this happens, there is a risk that provision is not made in accordance with IS 37, so provision may be understated and discuss with management to ensure that they are all made in accordance with IS 37. Last risk. In 2004, Green began a project to develop new technology. Project will be completed in August. Green has incurred costs of 350,000, which are recognized within intangible assets. The company incurred cost of 350,000 and has incurred included them in intangible asset. Okay, intangible asset is IS 38. Remember the risk. There is a risk that this expenditure does not meet development criteria as per IS 38. Hence, intangible assets may be overstated, right? The company has included some expenditure as intangible assets. So there is a risk that this does not meet development criteria as per IS-38. And you have included them as intangible assets. So intangible assets may be overstated. And response. Review breakdown of expenditure. to ensure only the expense expenditure that meets development criteria is included as intangible asset or you can also write development criteria is capitalized and the rest is expensed. Okay, so company has included 350,000 in intangible assets. There is a risk that this expenditure does not meet development criteria as per IS 38. Intangible assets may be overstated and response of intangible assets is that you need to review the expenditure to ensure 
only the area that is meeting the criteria is uh, capitalized or included as intangible asset and rest is expensed. Okay. So I hope that these things were memorized to you because we have done so many audit risk questions. Remember in, in inherent control detection risk or overstated, understated needs to be mentioned. Misstate is only allowed when you are not sure from the questions perspective. But here, if you write that intangible assets may be misstated, you won't gain marks because it's clearly a thing that when you have included them as intangible assets, they will be overstated. When you have not made a provision, you will say provision is misstated over slash understated. You won't gain marks because not creating provision means provision is understated. Okay. So provision point was easy. Intangible asset point was easy. And uh, inventory point was easy that inventory is damaged. So not in accordance with IS2 inventory may be overstated. The receivable days increasing receivables are overvalued. That point was easy. First year of audit, that point was easy. And uh, bank loan, that point was easy. So in my opinion, one can say that whole 16 marks may be difficult for a student, but at least 12 marks can be gained because first year of audit, rote learning point has discussed many times. Bank loan point comes in almost every question. Receivable days increased. Receivables are overvalued. Almost every question. Inventory is damaged. Not in accordance with IS two. Almost every question. Provision not being made because of fine. Provision is understated. Then this uh, <coughs> development criteria not met and included as intangible assets six points. So seems to be a very straightforward type of question. Okay. So you can copy this and then we will move towards the next part. Our party of sixteen marks is done now. Okay. Okay, so after discussion of this uh, particular audit risk requirement, let's move towards the next part of these questions. Okay, this requirement is of worth four marks after gaining 16 marks in audit risk responses. This requirement is four marks. Explain responsibility of Teal and Company. Who is Teal and Company? Teal and Company is the audit firm. Explain the responsibility of Teal and Company audit firm under ISA 250 consideration of laws and regulations in audit of financial uh, statements. You do not need to refer to the scenario. No need to refer to the scenario. I just need to tell responsibility of auditor under ISA 250 consideration of laws and regulations. Now remember, responsibility of auditor with respect to laws and regulations. Laws and regulations. means a topic which we have studied 
compliance and non-compliance. Remember the topic we studied? Laws and regulations means compliance and non-compliance. Okay. So what is the responsibility of auditors with respect to laws and regulations means it is asking what is the responsibility of auditors in respect of compliance and non-compliance. Okay. We have studied this uh, topic. I will refer to the handouts as well. But first and the foremost thing, like fraud and error, auditors have no responsibility with respect to compliance of law and regulation. and cannot be expected to prevent and detect non-compliance. Like we used to write, auditors have no responsibility with respect to fraud and error. They cannot be expected to prevent and detect fraud and error. However, they are required to obtain reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from material misstatements whether caused by fraud and error or by non-compliance. Okay. Like uh, when it asks what is the responsibility for it with respect to fraud, we say they have no responsibility to fraud. They are not expected to prevent it at fraud. They must ensure that financial statements are free from misstatement with respect to fraud. Similarly, what is the auditor's responsibility with respect to laws and regulations? Remember, laws and regulations is the topic of compliance. They have no responsibility with respect to compliance. Auditors are not here to detect whether companies complying with laws and regulations. They must obtain reasonable assurance that FS are free from misstatements, whether caused by fraud and error or whether caused by non-compliance. Okay. Then uh, there is reporting responsibilities for non-compliance. Okay. See uh, this handout of uh, in the F8 booklet, which I shared to you, audit planning and documentation topic. Then there is a topic of audit planning, interim and final audit. Okay. Then materiality. Then understanding the entity in its environment. Then fraud and error. Okay. Here, responsibility of management with respect to fraud. Responsibilities of auditor in respect to fraud. And then there is a topic called non-compliance. Okay. Now see the first thing. Compliance means follow all laws, rules, and regulations. So compliance means laws and regulations. Either it asks you auditor's responsibility with respect to laws and regulations, same thing. Either it asks auditor responsibility with respect to non-compliance, same thing. Okay. Then there is a topic, indicators of non-compliance. Okay. So the question hasn't asked me what are the indicators of non-compliance. It just asks what is the responsibility of auditor. So I won't write indicators of non-compliance. Audit procedures when non-compliance is identified, the question hasn't asked you what are the audit procedures auditor will perform in respect of laws and regulations and non-compliance. So I would not write uh, this as well. Okay. Reporting identified or suspected non-compliance. So the auditor shall communicate with those charged with governance. Okay, this is the responsibility. Should communicate with those charged with governance. But if auditor suspects this, those charged with governance are involved, Auditor shall communicate with the next higher level of authority, such as audit committee or supervisory board. If this does not exist, auditor shall consider need to obtain legal advice. This is auditor's responsibility. The auditor shall consider the impact on audit report if he she concludes that non-compliance is a material effect on financial statements and has not been adequately reflected or is prevented by the management in those charged with governance. Okay. The auditor shall determine whether identified or suspected non-compliance has to be reported to regulatory and enforcement authorities. Okay, so these are all auditor responsibilities. So what you can write in this answer is that you can first write this para. Auditors have no responsibility with respect to compliance of laws and regulations, cannot be expected to prevent and detect non-compliance. However, they are required to obtain reasonable assurance that FS are free from misstatements, whether caused by fraud and error or by non-compliance. And then you don't need to write audit procedures of non-compliance. This is not us. You don't need to write indicators of non-compliance. This is not us. You can write this. 
what should auditor do because whatever auditor does that's his responsibility okay so you can write these two paragraphs or three paragraphs or maybe summarize them okay so once you write this paragraph and then summarize these three paragraphs and write it's all set to get four marks okay so first you can copy this then i will shift the screen and you can copy this if you want to okay so first let's copy this or let me write the summarized answer myself leave it the first paragraph auditor shall communicate with those charter governments if they are involved then report to higher level of management yeah. Okay, so this is enough for four marks. First, remember, whenever it asks for auditor's responsibility in fraud and error, first clarify he has no responsibility to prevent, detect fraud. He's only required to obtain reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from misstatements, whether due to fraud and error, and then write this stuff of fraud and error. Okay. Responsibilities of auditor in relation to fraud and error. Okay. Similarly, when it asks what is auditor's responsibility in laws and regulations, laws and regulations means compliance. Okay. No responsibility for compliance. Okay. He is expected to obtain reasonable assurance that financial statements are free from misstatements due to non compliance. Okay. And then these three paragraphs in your summarized words. That's it. Okay. Please copy this so I can move forward.
let's move forward now. Describe substantive procedures auditors should perform and appropriate and deliver. Describe audit substantive procedures which auditor, deal and company should perform in order to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence in respect of additions. Very easy. Substantive procedures in respect of additions to PPP. So, substantive procedures with respect to additions. We can refer to the note of uh, additions in substantive procedures. Select a sample of additions, agree cost to supplier invoice. Obtain breakdown of additions, cast the list and agree all additions added in NC register. Add it in NC register. Review board minutes to ensure purchase authorized by board. Okay, so there are four asked. I have written three from the end out, one I have to write uh, on my own. Okay, so one more since addition is uh, a purchase of asset. Addition means uh, purchase of asset additions to property plant equipment. Okay, you can write recalculate the depletion expense or you can write. See, additions to property plan equipment. So I can write review adequacy disclosures to ensure they're in accordance with IE 16 property plant and equipment. So four marks to come in was there. I got four marks, three I copied. And then since it was addition of PP, so I wrote review disclosures to ensure they're in accordance with IE 16. And additions of asset, you can also write recalculate depression expense for there. Okay, please copy this.
Hmm. Okay, last comment. It is now 2nd November 2005 and audit team of Green, audit of Green has been completed. So it is 2nd November audit of Green has been completed. Auditor's report was signed in October and in line with Teal Company's quality management procedures for new clients, a post-issuance review has been carried out. During a review of Green's audit files, the engagement quality reviewer noted the following. The members of the audit engagement team who carried out the audit of Green had previously audited educational organizations, not retail manufacturing companies. So Green, Green sells a variety of plants, garden equipment and garden furniture to wholesaler and to retail customers. Okay, Green sells it to retail customers. Okay. So the year end was uh, 31st July. See, pay attention what I'm trying to explain. Year end was 31st July. It is now 2nd November. Audit of Green has been completed. Audit report has been signed. And in line with quality management procedures, okay, a post-issuance review has been carried out. During the review of Green's audit files, the engagement quality review noted the following. Members of audit team who carried out the audit of Green had previously audited educational organizations, not retail organizations. The audit partner held a planning meeting with engagement team. However, several junior team members were unable to attend due to a training course which was held on the same day. No additional briefing on key audit risks associated with Green was held for these team members. Audit supervisor was absent due to illness during last two weeks of the final audit. Audit assistants continued their work, but no senior member were assigned to audit Green. Due to audit supervisor's illness, the audit of intangible assets was reallocated from audit supervisor to a junior member of the team who had never audited intangible assets before. Identify and explain three quality management deficiencies in the approach adopted by Teal and provide recommendation which would have addressed each deficiency <laughs> to ensure compliance with quality management requirements. Okay, now people think that uh, this is the same question, three deficiencies and recommendation. Okay, There is deficiency in recommendation, but there are no internal control deficiencies. What you do in the questions is just internal control deficiencies and recommendations. And internal control deficiencies are in the company, right? Internal control deficiencies are in the company. The company has some weaknesses. Here, what is happening? It is now 2nd November. Audit has been completed. In line with Teal and Company. Who is Teal and Company? Teal and Company is the audit firm. In line with Teal and Company's quality procedures, a post issuance review has been carried out. And during the review of Green Audit file, the reviewer noted the following. These things. So what happens is when the audit gets completed, the audit firm conducts a quality review, how well they perform the audit. It's not anything related to the company. The company's internal control weaknesses is a separate thing. Here, Teal and Company's audit firm in line with Teal and Company's quality management procedures. You noted the following, that members who carried the audit had previously audited educational organizations, not retail organizations. The audit partner held a planning meeting. No junior member was available due to training course held on same day. No additional briefing was done. Audit supervisor was ill. So intangible assets was done by some junior member who has never audited. So identify, explain three internal control deficiencies in the company is not the requirement. Identify and explain three quality deficiencies in the approach adopted by Teal. You know, there are some problems in Teal company system, right? This is all about Teal company, the audit form. So explain three deficiencies in Teal company's procedures, provide a recommendation which could have addressed these deficiencies. So it's very clear to the three deficiencies, okay? Deficiency number one, the members, of audit team who carried out audit of Green had previously audited educational organizations. Okay. 
the audit partner held a meeting with staff. Several members were unable to attend due to training course held on the same day. Another deficiency. Due to audit supervisor's illness, audit of intangible assets was reallocated from audit supervisor to junior member who had never audited intangible assets before. Okay, so I've written three deficiencies. Now I need to write why it's a deficiency and recommendation. Remember, these are not internal control weaknesses in the company, right? Deal and company, the audit firm is doing its uh, quality review after audit has been completed. That happens in the firm that when audit gets completed, they do their quality review, how well they perform the audit. And they notice three things. So identify and explain three quality management deficiencies and recommendation, okay? So there are some not internal control weaknesses in the company. These are quality issues in the audit firm. So identify three quality uh, management deficiencies in your company. So members of audit team who conducted audit of green had previously audited only educational organizations, okay? Audit partner, when he was having, the partner was having a planning meeting, okay? When the partner was having a planning meeting, So audit partner was having a planning meeting, but junior members were not there. Who Junior team members who were going on audit, they were not there because they had a training course. An intangible assets audit was done by a junior member who had never audited intangible assets because there were some quality issues. I need to write why these are issues and the recommendation. Okay, let's start. Now, like this is a very easy thing that if audit of intangible assets was allocated to a junior member who had never audited intangible assets before, why this is the weakness? Intangible assets can be a sensitive and complex area and junior member may not appropriate competence and skill to audit this. Hence, he may form wrong conclusion on intangible asset. Okay. Recommendation audit of Intangible asset should not be allocated to junior member. He may be given some easy work and a senior member from deal and company should audit intangible asset. Getting it? Audit of intangible assets was allocated to junior. He has never audited intangible assets. So it's a weakness, quality weakness from the firm's point of view. So intangible assets can be a sensitive complex area. Junior members will not have appropriate competence and skill. He may form wrong conclusion on intangible assets. So audit should not be reallocated to junior. He may be given easy tasks like some field work 
that senior members should have audited intangible asset. Okay. Then there was another weakness. The audit partner held a planning meeting with the engagement team. Engagement team is the audit team. So audit partner held a planning meeting with the engagement team. However, several junior members were unable to attend due to a training course, which was held on the same day. So this is a quality weakness. That audit partner held a planning meeting where we plan things. And junior members were unable to attend as they were training same day. Why this is a weakness? Without briefing them. The junior members may not understand entity and its environment, may not understand risks faced by the company, and hence they may not perform appropriate audit procedures. Recommendation, the training would be postponed some other day or if it is not possible then another briefing session for junior members must be arranged by audit partner to ensure they get the relevant information before starting audit. You know, before starting audit, whoever are the team members, they are called by audit partner who explains them everything. If the junior members miss that meeting, they don't know what the company is, what are the risks faced by the company. Hence, they don't know what is the company. They cannot design audit procedures. Training could be postponed if it's not possible. For those members who are absent, another briefing should be conducted. Okay? This is another quality management weakness and its recommendation. So please copy so I can move towards the last one.
Okay, last point. The members of audit team who conducted audit of green had previously audited educational organizations, not retail organizations. Retail organizations. are different than educational organizations. If team members have not audited retail organizations before they may not have sufficient experience to perform audit of important items like for example inventory Educational organizations don't have so much inventory, but retail organizations have so much inventory. If your audit team members haven't audited retail organizations before, only audited educational organizations, so they don't have the experience to value important items. Like, for example, they have never audited high-value inventory because educational organizations don't have high inventory. Okay? Educational organizations don't have high level of receivables. Okay? They don't have suppliers, payables. Okay? Too much. But retail organizations, purchasing goods, too much payables, then selling goods, receivables, and inventory. So if no staff member has previously audited retail organization, that means they don't have the experience to value such uh, high volume items and uh, they may not perform audit in a better manner. Okay. The team should be comprised of people who have audited retail organizations before so that audit is performed in a proper manner. Or at least some members must have experience of retail organizations, this you can write, okay? So I think uh, this was again a very, very good question from learning perspective, it wasn't related to the scenario too much because it gave you some new things, new information like this for t and company and then three quality management weaknesses, not the internal control weakness in the company, quality management deficiencies in Teal. There were some quality issues in Teal. So it uh, identified you some quality weaknesses and then after the quality weaknesses, why there was a weakness and recommendation okay so all these three things are in front of you okay our this question is now fully complete you can copy this so that we can move to the next question okay
Okay, so after completing the question number one of this uh, March, June 2024 exam question in which you dealt with uh, dealing with audit risk and responses mainly, let's move to the next question of this March, June 2024 attempt. This scenario relates to five requirements. We just completed the previous question, question number one of 30 marks in which we did the risk responses part and then the compliance part, then the uh, substantive procedures of additions part, then deficiencies part. Now this question number two, uh, this scenario relates to five requirements. Please pay attention. It is 1st July. You are an audit supervisor with Canyon and Company. So if you're an audit supervisor at Canyon and Company, that means Canyon and Company is the audit firm, right? Has been discussed multiple times that if you are the audit supervisor of Canyon and Company, Canyon and Company is the audit firm. Preparing the draft audit program and reviewing extracts from internal control documentation in preparation for the audit of your client, Francisco Company. Francisco is the client. The company's year end is 30th September. It is the wholesale food operator with 18 distribution depots and one central warehouse. Payroll. Francisco's company employs distribution depot staff who are paid monthly based on the number of hours worked. Each employee has a staff ID card, which they use to sign in and sign out of the depot at the beginning and end of each shift to record their hours work. This process is supervised by security staff as well as the CCTV cameras. Hours work per employer are automatically transferred from signing system into payroll system. Hourly wager is preset and payroll system automatically calculates gross and net along with relevant deductions and produces pay slips, which are immediately emailed to employees. Seems to be a very good system that uh, it employs distribution depot staffs who are paid monthly based on number of hours work. Each employee has a staff ID card which they use to sign in and sign out beginning and end of each shift to record their hours. Process is supervised by security as well as CCTV. Hours worked are automatically transferred from system to payroll system. Wage rate is preset. Payroll system automatically calculates gross and net pay with deductions and process pay slips, which are emailed to employees. Access to employee standing data. Remember, I have taught you multiple times standing data is the master file. So access to employee standing data master file in payroll system is restricted to payroll managers through use of password, which the system requires to be changed on a monthly basis. So access is also to not to everyone, but only to payroll managers. Distribution depot employees are paid by bank transfer on a monthly basis. Senior payroll manager reviews the list of bank payments, agrees this to the payroll records. If any discrepancies are noted, they are investigated by senior manager who then makes the required adjustment in the payroll records. So payroll seems to be very good purchases. Francisco has a central purchasing department based at its head office. When goods are required, production supervisor submits a request to purchasing department. Multi-part purchase order is then generated. Purchasing manager authorizes all orders below 3,000 and the purchasing director authorizes all orders of 3,000 and above. So all orders are authorized, but purchasing manager authorizes all orders below 3,000 and above 3,000, the purchasing director authorizes. On receipt of goods, the quality and quantities received are checked by a warehouse team member against supplier's delivery note, and a goods received note is produced. Copy of GRN is sent to both finance department and purchasing department. When purchase invoices are received from suppliers, they are logged into the invoices receipt file and accounting system assigns each invoice a unique number based on supplier score and date of input. Finance clerk then matches the invoices to a copy of the relevant purchase order, passes those two documents to the finance director for authorization prior to being invoice being put into the payables. Non-current assets. Francisco owns approximately 55% of his distribution depots and the remainder are lease premises which have been confirmed as correctly capitalized in line with relevant accounting standards. Lease agreements and ownership documents are held in finance department. Earlier in the year, members of the company's internal audit department undertook a review of lease agreements and ownership documents but were unable to recate a number of relevant documents. So documents are held in the finance department but internal audit submitted a review of lease agreements and ownership documents, they were unable to locate a number of documents. Each distribution depot is set up as a separate cost center is given an annual expenditure budget, but some cost centers have already significantly exceeded their annual budgets. When new equipment is purchased, finance manager classifies the purchase order as capital or revenue expenditure. Classification is made with reference to formal company policy established by the finance director, whose sample checks that the capital or revenue expenditure also allocation has been correctly applied and evidence is this review by way of a signature okay when we will do this part we will study in detail at the moment after the scenario of payroll purchases and non-current assets let's see what the first requirement is uh isa 265 communicating deficiencies in internal control to those charged with governance and management provide guidance on communicating significant deficiency in internal control define a significant deficiency you need to define what a significant deficiency is, okay? 
and describe three matters the auditor may consider in determining whether a deficiency in internal control is significant. Note, you do not need to say, refer to the scenario to answer this requirement. This for mark requirement, you don't need to refer to the scenario. There are two things. Define a significant deficiency. What is the definition of significant deficiency? And describe three matters auditor may consider in determining whether deficiency is significant. So three matters which auditor may consider in deciding whether deficiency is significant or not. Okay, let's start. So first we have to describe what a significant, define what a significant deficiency is one mark and then three matters auditor may consider in deciding whether deficiency is significant. Remember one mark requirement if someone asks you define significant deficiency. So significant deficiency is any deficiency which in the auditor's professional judgment is of sufficient importance to be brought to the attention of those charged with governance. Okay, this is the definition of significant deficiency. What is a significant deficiency? It's any deficiency which auditor thinks in auditor judgment is of importance and that needs to be brought to the attention of management. Like for example, let's suppose uh, people while doing work, people are talking to each other. Do you think people are talking to each other and not spending like let's suppose the timings are nine to five. So people are sitting together working and then talking to each other. One says, we hired them to work for nine to five. See, they are talking. Do you think this thing is of so much importance that needs to be brought to the management's attention? No. This might not be a significant deficiency, but let's suppose two people are colliding with each other, okay? And they are colliding with each other <clears throat> and trying to do fraud with the company. This may be a significant deficiency and that needs to be brought to the attention of management, okay? So significant deficiency is any deficiency which in the auditor's judgment needs to be brought to the attention of management, okay? Next, describe three matters which auditor may consider in determining whether a deficiency is significant. Any three matters which auditor may think to decide whether deficiency is significant or not. This is three bonus marks. Okay, let's go in my handout file of this internal control. Okay, class 22 to 30 file. Okay, and uh, you also have this file in your course attachments. Internal control, five components of internal control. Limitations of internal control system. Okay, see. After that. Has been taught to you. See, matters to consider by auditor in deciding whether deficiency in internal control is significant. How does auditor decide whether deficiency is significant? I have stated five bullet points. Just write three, three marks. How auditor decides whether deficiency is significant, amounts involved. Large amounts involved may be significant. Small amounts involved, he may decide it's not significant. Volume of activity, this has occurred one time, not so significant. Multiple times, significant. Importance, whether this thing is of important nature for the company, like let's suppose this thing is happening in sales, very important. Let's suppose this thing is happening in one or two petty cash items, not so important. So how does auditor decide whether deficiency is significant? I have taught you five points. You just need to write three. See? Three matters. Number one, just the copy paste thing will give you some amounts exposed to deficiencies.
Number two, volume of activity that has occurred or could occur. Number three, importance of controls to the financial reporting process. Okay, there are two more, no need to write, cause and frequency of expectations, interaction of efficiency with other efficiencies. So this is a very easy requirement of four marks that first you were asked to define what a significant deficiency is, any deficiency which in auditor's uh, knowledge or judgment is of utmost importance to be brought to the attention of management. Three matters, I have taught you five matters, you can write any three. Please copy this four mark requirement is over, we can then move forward. Okay. In respect, second part, six marks, in respect of the system of internal control of Francisco, identify and explain three direct controls. Direct controls are controls, also called strengths, okay? Many times we have discussed these in past paper questions that direct controls is also called controls or strengths. It's not asking for weaknesses, it's asking for controls or strengths. Three, and describe test of control the auditor should perform to assess if each of these controls is operating effectively. Three marks for three controls and test of control, okay? Controls. I have seen there are some controls, okay? First control. Employees have a staff ID card which they use to sign in and sign out of depot. And this process is supervised by security staff as well as CCTV cameras. This is a control strength, direct control, okay? 
I won't just get marks by writing this. I have to write why this is a strength. Like I write the weakness. So I write why it is a weakness. Similarly, if I write control, direct control strength, why it is a strength. Okay, I will write it. But first, identify three strengths. Access to employees standing data in payroll system. is restricted to payroll managers, okay? One more thing you can write also, password is changed monthly, okay? Third, it didn't ask only for payroll, we can write for anything in respect of system of internal control. So you can write about uh, payroll, purchase anything. Had it told that only in respect of system of payroll, find three direct controls. So I would have only looked at payroll, but since it's open in respect of system of internal control, so I can write from any. All purchases above three thousand and below three thousand are authorized by purchasing director. and purchasing manager. You can always change the words. It doesn't mean you have to write uh, like I am writing, like you can write this trend. All purchase orders require authorization. I have written it more detailed, all purchase orders above 3000, below 3000 are authorized by respective director and manager. You can write all purchase orders are authorized. So it doesn't make any sense as long as the point is right. Okay. So I have got the three strengths, three controls, three direct controls. Now I have to write why this is a control and the test of control. Okay. So I will write it. Why it is a control and the test of control. Okay, so remember one thing that uh, when the sign-in out process was not supervised, was it a weakness? Yes. Why it was a weakness? Because if the process is not supervised, one person can hand over his card to other person to sign in on his behalf, leading to that person being paid even though he's not there. Increased payroll costs. So if the process is supervised, okay, why this is a strength? The employee can now only sign in on his behalf. He cannot sign in by using other employees card leading to proper or you can say genuine payroll costs, okay? You cannot sign in by using other employees' cards because if the process is not supervised, one person can hand over his card to other to swipe on his behalf. He's paid even though he's not there, increase payroll costs. Now this means, this trend means that person can only sign in on his behalf. He cannot use other cards, genuine payroll costs, okay? How to test this control? What is the control? The signing in process is supervised by security staff, okay? Observe the process of sign in and sign out to ensure security staff are supervising the process to test this control of sign in and out. 
you can observe sign out process that whether security staff are supervising and you are also monitoring this process uh, by cctv in addition cctv recordings can be viewed to ensure security staff are supervising the process okay done with two marks now okay access to employee standing data in payroll system is restricted to payroll managers also password is changed monthly okay so remember a weakness that uh, access to standing data master file was available with juniors so juniors can access it confidentiality breaches plus they can do amendments to fraud leading to increased payroll costs okay now this is not uh, happening So had it been a weakness that access to employee standing data is uh, given to all. So this can result in confidentiality breaches. This can result in fraud or unauthorized changes leading to increased payroll costs, okay? This ensures there is no unauthorized access. So confidentiality breaches will be avoided and fraud or unauthorized payment chances are reduced right if uh, access was to everyone remember what you used to write that now someone can unauthorizedly access it change the data leading to increased payroll costs or confidentiality breaches since access is restricted to payroll managers okay there is no unauthorized access no confidence breaches and unauthorized payments and frauds will be avoided. now we are saying that our control is access to res access is restricted to payroll managers okay ask any person other than payroll manager to attempt access system should reject access. Remember this DOC that when access is restricted to some people, ask any other person to attempt access system should reject access. You can write it all like this also that password is changed monthly. So ask uh, any person to attempt with old password. System should reject access. You can write it like this as well. That ask any person to gain access via old password. System should reject access. Because if system is accepting access, that means control is not working. Password has not been changed. But if it rejects access, that means control is working. Password is changed. Similarly, your control is access is only to payroll managers. Ask any other person other than payroll manager to attempt access system should reject access. That means control is working properly, test of control. If system accepts access, that means anyone can access control is not working. That's what test of control is, okay? Now, one more thing, and uh, you can uh, see this as well. Then I will give you time to copy these three. Okay, now let's move towards the last one. The last one is all purchase orders above 3,000 and below 3,000 are authorized. Remember the weaknesses, purchase orders were not authorized. What you used to write, if purchase orders are not authorized, this can lead to unnecessary purchases, non-genuine purchases, purchases not required by the business, unnecessary purchases leading to increased expenses, okay? Now, if all purchase orders are authorized, why this is a strength? This ensures only goods needed are purchased, thereby avoiding unnecessary costs, okay? 
had it been a weakness that uh, there was no authorization, so we used to write that uh, this means anyone can purchase. Non-business purchases, unnecessary purchases, leading to increased costs. If all purchase orders are authorized, this means only goods needed are purchased, thereby avoiding unnecessary costs. And my control is all purchase orders are authorized. Ask for a sample of purchase orders. and ensure they are authorized and signed by respective manager and director. You are saying to someone that my control is all orders are authorized. How to does this control? Ask for a sample of purchase orders. Ensure they are authorized and signed. If they're signed, control is working. If they're not signed, control is not working. This is how you test the control, okay? Six easy marks, please copy this, then we can move forward.
Okay, let's move forward now. Identify and explain five deficiencies in Francisco system of internal control provider recommendations. So, firstly, we were asked to find three strengths. We found three strengths, also called controls, also called donut controls, direct controls. Now, five deficiencies and recommendations. So, now in this complete system, you have to find five deficiencies, why it's a deficiency, and then a recommendation. Okay. So, let's start searching for the deficiencies. Francesco employs a distribution depot staff who are paid monthly based on number of hours work. Each employee has a staff ID card, which they used to sign in and out of. That's a good thing, not a weakness. Uh, process is supervised by security staff as well as CCTV. Hours worked per employee are automatically transferred from the signing system into payroll. So hours worked per employee are transferred from system to payroll. Early wage recipe said payroll system automatically calculates cross and net pay along with deductions and produces pay slips email to this. Okay, so I can, uh, the system looks good, but obviously now I have to have a critical mindset of picking everything which sounds a weakness. Okay, so early wage recipe set, payroll system automatically calculates cross and net pay along with deductions. So, payroll system auto automatically calculates gross and net pay along with deductions. It just produces pay slips which are emailed to employees. So weakness calculations are produced automatically by the payroll system and are not checked by anyone. Okay? It's saying that the payroll system automatically calculates cross and net along with deductions and calculations produced automatically are not checked by anyone. There's nothing mentioned that the calculations are checked by anyone. Why it's a weakness? There may be some errors in system generated calculations which if not checked may result in over slash underpayment to employees, we have studied this point many times that system generated calculations should always be checked by someone. System generated calculations are good, but they must be checked by someone. If, according to this, that system automatically produces everything and emails the pay slips to employees, it means the calculations are being done by the system and the pay slips are being delivered to employees. There is no check by anyone. So, system generated calculations are not checked. It's a weakness because there may be some errors which if not checked, may result in over underpayments. And remember one word we used to say, this can either demotivate employees if underpayment, okay? And if overpayment and then you claim it back, he gets a bit of angry loss of employee goodwill, okay? So if system generated calculations are not checked, this may result in over underpayments to employees, okay? What is the recommendation? System generated calculations should be checked by payroll manager on a sample basis. Obviously, you cannot check uh, everything. So payroll manager can check system and other calculations on a sample basis to ensure correct amounts. are paid to employees. Okay. Two marks out of 10. That uh, system generated calculations are not checked. This may result in errors, which may result in over underpayment. And system generated calculations should be checked by a payroll manager on a sample basis so that uh, the correct amounts are paid to employees. Okay. 
access to employee standing data is restricted to payroll managers to password good thing distribution deep employees are paid by bank transfer on a monthly basis the payroll manager reviews the list of payments agrees this to the payroll records if any discrepancies are noted these are investigated by senior payroll manager who then makes the required adjustments in the payroll records okay very much uh, checking that the senior payroll manager is reviewing the list of being payments if there are differences they are investigated by him and then amendments are made so good control Francisco has a central purchasing department based at its head office. When goods are required, production supervisor submits a request to the purchasing department. Multi-part purchase order is then generated. Purchasing manager authorizes all orders below 3,000. Director authorizes all orders above 3,000. Again, good thing. Everything is authorized. On receipt of goods. Receipt of goods means when you receive goods. Quality and quantity received are checked by a warehouse team member. Again, supplies delivery note and a GRN is produced. Copy of GRN is sent to both finance and purchasing department. Now, it's a big weakness, which you have studied multiple times. When goods are received, the quantity and quality. is checked by warehouse team member against supplier delivery note. You have studied this point in the classes as well. It's a big blunder. It's a big weakness. How? When goods are received, the quantity and quality is checked. Good thing. Again, supplier delivery note. Now, supplier delivery note is sent by the supplier. It would detail the thing that supplier has sent. You are checking the quantity against supplier's note. Okay, the quantity which you receive, you are checking it against supplier's delivery note. So, obviously, supplier's delivery note is going to mention the same quantity which he has sent. It may not be the quantity what you have ordered. So when you receive the goods, you should never check it with supplier's delivery note. You should check against purchase order. Because what is the purchase order? Purchase order means what you ordered. And when you receive delivery, you should check it against what you ordered, your purchase order, rather than supplier's delivery note. Like for example, from a restaurant, you ordered three burgers. Like from a restaurant, you ordered three burgers, okay? They sent two burgers by mistake. And then they gave you a delivery note, a bill, which stated two burgers. So you said, okay, burgers are two. And the supplier's delivery note and bill mentions two. That's okay. It's wrong. Supplier's bill or delivery note is going to state the same thing which he sent, not what you ordered. So you ordered three. You should compare with what you ordered three and what you received two. So then the discrepancy with whether we have received what we ordered. If you are checking it against the supplier's delivery note, it's never going to pick up any mistakes. So when goods are received, quality is checked by warehouse staff member against supply delivery note. This may result in company accepting goods which were not ordered as supplier delivery note will mention the quantity which he delivered rather than quantity which we ordered. So what is the recommendation? Any goods received goods received must be compared by with purchase order rather than 
delivery node to ensure correct quantity is received. Okay, getting this point. Uh, this has also come up in many past papers that when you receive goods, you should never check with supply delivery note. You should check with your purchase order to see whether you have received the correct goods or not. If you check it against a bad order, you may accept goods which you didn't audit. And uh, this may be time consuming or wasted. Okay, please copy these two points so that I can move forward. Okay, so on receipt of goods, the quality and quantity received are checked by warehouse team member against supply delivery note. So I told you that this is wrong. Okay, when purchased invoices are received from suppliers, when invoices are received from suppliers, they are logged into invoices received file in the accounting system, assigns each invoice a unique number based on supplier's code and date of input. Finance clerk then matches the invoices to a copy of purchase order and passes those two documents to the finance director for authorization prior to invoice being input into the payments. I am finding some problem here, okay? See, finance clerk matches the invoices to a copy of purchase order. You receive the invoice, you match it to the purchase order, and then you input them into the Remember the previous weakness, goods received should never be compared with supply delivery note they should be compared with your purchase order because you need to receive what you ordered, not what suppliers. Similarly, invoices should never be matched with only purchase order because purchase order is what? What you ordered, okay? And you are paying invoice. Invoice is being compared to purchase order, what you ordered, okay? Invoice should always be compared with GRN before paying because the payment system is that. You should not pay for what you ordered. You should pay for what you received. So there was one problem in the second point that the quantity received was being checked against supplies delivery note. I told you wrong. Quantity received should be checked against purchase order that whether I'm receiving what I ordered Similarly, invoice is being matched with purchase order. That means invoice, the bill is being matched with what we ordered. 
we should not match the bill with what we ordered. We should match the bill with what we received because payment has to be made, not for what you ordered, PO, but for what you received. Okay, so this is another weakness. Invoice is being matched to purchase order before being input to system. Okay, invoice is being matched to purchase order. Purchase order mentions goods we ordered, not what we received. Comparing invoice with purchase order rather than GRN may mean that company will pay for goods that are not received leading to increased cost for the company. Recommendation, invoice should always be compared with GRN before being paid or being input into system. This is very important things, two very important points, easy but important, okay? That when you receive goods, you should never check it with GRN, no. You should never check it with the, the supplier's delivery note. You should always check the goods received with purchase order. So that checking that what you are receiving is whether what you ordered, Similarly, invoice should never be matched with purchase order or delivery note because bill has to be paid for those items which you received, not what you ordered. So if you are comparing the goods received with PO, that's fine because what should be received, what we ordered. Similarly, bill must be paid not for what we ordered, but for what we received and what we received is where in GRN. So you need to match invoice with GRN to ensure you're only paying goods for what you received. You should never compare invoice with, uh, like this is mentioning uh, the PO, right? Francisco owns approximately 55% of distribution depots and remainder are leased. So it owns 55% of distribution depots, remainder are leased which have been confirmed as correctly applied in line with relevant accounting standards. Lease agreements and ownership documents are held in finance department. So you own some and some are leased. So lease agreements and ownership documents are held in finance department. Earlier in the year, members of the internal audit department undertook a review of lease agreements and ownership documents, but were unable to locate a number of relevant documents. So weakness. A number of lease agreements and ownership documents are missing or unlocated. What happens when your lease agreements or ownership documents go missing or unlocated? This may result in extra costs to take out duplicates or may create problems if company plans to sell some property, okay? Because uh, if you want to sell some property and you don't have ownership documents, will create problems in selling, okay? Or you can write that company has to take out duplicates that will be costly for the company, okay? Recommendation? that company should try to locate missing documents. And if it is unable to find 
they should take out duplicate and store them in a safe or bank to avoid risk of loss in future okay first try to locate it if still don't locate it you need to have duplicates at least so that if you want to sell you have something okay one more is left after that this question will be over seems to be a good questions we have got eight out of ten each distribution depot is set up as a separate cost centers given an annual expenditure budget. Some cost centers have already significantly exceeded their budgets. When new equipment is purchased, finance manager classifies the purchase order as capital or revenue. Classification is made with reference to company policy established by finance director who sample checks that capital or revenue expenditure allocation is correct. Evidence is by signature. Seems to be a good thing. I'm short of one weakness now. Let's try to find it. I can make one weakness here. Well, it's a bit tricky, but I can make it here. It's uh, something which I have to do forcefully because uh, the question lacks uh, some enough data. Distribution depot employees are paid by bank transfer on a monthly basis. Senior payroll manager reviews the list of bank payments. He agrees this to payroll records, second task. If any discrepancies are found, they are investigated by senior payroll manager. He investigates and then makes required adjustment in the payroll records. So senior payroll manager is doing four tasks, lack of segregation of duties can be made, which can increase chances of fraud. Okay, the senior payroll manager reviews bank payments, agrees to payroll records, investigates the senior manager difficulties and makes required adjustment, okay? Let's write this to wrap up this question because other I'm unable to find more. Senior payroll manager reviews list of bank payments, agrees to payroll records, investigates any discrepancies, and amends payroll records. This is lack of segregation of duties and senior payroll manager may commit fraud as he has power to amend records as well. He can do fraud and then amend the records. Okay. Recommendation. Senior payroll manager shall not be given so much tasks. Record amendment can be given to some member other than payroll manager, like payroll director or finance director. Okay, you may not find it too attractive, but that's how the paper works. Since they're short of items, whatever is suitable, I wrote that, okay? You can write these three points, okay? Our question two of this March 2024 question is now Very easy question in which deficiencies definition and how auditor decides deficiency significant three marks. Then six marks for strengths or direct controls and TOCs, and then 10 marks for error, okay? Please copy this.
Okay, now let's move towards the next question of this March, June 2024 past paper. You have done audit risk, you have done TOCs. Now this is likely to be substantive. This scenario relates to four requirements. It is 1st July 2005. Coquit owns 10 shops selling kitchen equipment. Your firm, Beanie, is about to commence the final audit for the year ended 31st May 2005. Draft PBT is 22.8 million. Last year it was 19.7 and net assets are 84.3 million. Last year 77.7. The following matters have been brought to your attention. So it's a normal scenario that it is 1st July. Coquit owns 10 shops, including selling kitchen equipment. Firm Beanie is about to commence the final audit. Firm is Beanie. It's about to commence final audit. Draft profit is given. Last year's profit is given. Net assets are given. Following matters have been brought to your attention. Inventory. Coquit sells a range of cookery products endorsed by a famous TV chef, Prime Gosso. In February, the TV company that produced a show cancelled the program, which led to a reduction in demand for Remy Gusto's products. Coquette stopped purchasing these goods in March 2005. Total inventory in the draft financial statements is 4.25 million. Coquette company's system generated inventory valuation report shows that this includes Remy Gusto's products at a cost of 1.7 million. A member of audit team attended the year in inventory count of Coquette. So, Coquette sells a range of cookery products. It is endorsed by a famous TV chef. In February, the TV company that produced his show cancelled the program, which led to reduction in demand for Remy Gusto's products. Coquette stopped purchasing these goods in March 2005. So year end is uh, 1st July. You stop purchasing the goods. Sorry, it is 1st July. And year end is 31st May. Okay, a TV show cancelled uh, his program. And you stop purchasing these goods in March. Inventory in financial statements at year end is 425 System generated inventory valuation report shows that this includes Remy Gusto's products at a cost of 1.7 million. So your inventory at year end is 4.25, which includes a Remy Gusto's product of 1.7, whose sales have declined. Member of audit team attended the year end inventory count of Coquet. Decrease in payables. The accounts payable clerk let, left the company in January 2005. No replacement has been hired. Following information has been provided by the finance director. Trade payables have risen, fallen from 3.5 million to 2.8 and payable payment period from 72 days to 53 days. Finance director also mentioned that no reconciliation of supplier statements had been performed since December. The audit team has decided not to perform a year-end payable circularization as response rates in previous years were low. So payables have been falling, payable days have fallen, and finance director has mentioned that no reconciliations have been done, and audit team has decided not to perform a circularization. Redundancy provision. In May, the management of Coquette retired to close down one of the shops as it is unprofitable. An announcement of this decision was made on the company's website on 28th May and staff informed on the timetable for closure. All 32 staff employed in the shop are to be made redundant and the redundancy provision of 1.8 million is included in the financial statements for the year ended 31st May 2005. The closure is expected to take place in September. So in May, the management has decided to close the shops. Decision was made on 28th May. Staff was informed, 32 staff members will be made redundant, redundancy provision has been set up, and closure will be in September. Okay, so there are three issues present, one of inventory, one of payables, and one of redundancy provision. Requirement A5 marks describe substantive procedures auditors should perform to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence in relation to valuation of inventory. Five easy marks, substantive procedures for valuation of inventory. You need to refer to the handout of substantive procedures where every substantive procedure is mentioned. And there you go, substantive procedures for valuation of inventory. Okay. There are six procedures mentioned in the handout for valuation of inventory that uh, for a sample of inventory of goods at year end, ensure cost is correctly stated by comparing cost to a recent purchase invoice. Okay. For a sample of manufactured items, now you won't write this point number two. Okay. Because you are not manufacturing items. You're just buying and selling them. Right. You just sell kitchen equipment. You don't manufacture it. Okay. You purchase the goods and sell it. So for a sample of manufactured items, point two won't come. So for a sample of inventory of goods at year end, ensure cost is correctly stated by comparing cost to recent purchase invoice. Okay. And review aged inventory report, discuss with management why slow moving goods have not been received, written off. A review average inventory days of current year compared with previous years, discuss various things with management, follow up any damaged obsolete items. Okay. Select a sample of goods, review posture and versus to a certain if NRV is above cost. Okay. Let's write it.
I won't write point two because it's for a sample of manufactured items. We are not making items here. Okay. Okay. And I have just got the examiner answer in front of me. Trust me, you can check the examiner answer also. Five points are required. And out of the five points I wrote directly from my handouts. Okay. Four points are as it is present in the examiner answer as well. Okay. This point number two, three, four, five, you can check the examiner answer as it is there present in the examiner answer. So always remember this handout is the key. If you have understood or memorized it, things will be very easy to, for you. Okay. Please copy this.
Okay, the next requirement is substantive procedures in relation to completeness of payables. Okay, so I want to write five substantive procedures of payables. Okay, now the accounts payable clerk left the company in January. No replacement has been hired. The following information has been provided by the finance director. Payables have decreased and the payables payment period has decreased. Finance director also mentioned that no reconciliations had been performed in December. Audit team has decided not to perform a circularization as response rates were low. Okay, five procedures for payables. Again, you go in the notes, procedures for payables, perform a payable circularization for non-responsive with client subscriptions and a follow-up circularization. If no responsive, telephone the customer. If still no responses, perform an alternative procedures. If you write any of these above four, you won't get a single mark. Why? Because all these four procedures relate to circularization and in the scenario, it's clearly mentioned the audit team has decided not to perform a circularization. They won't send a confirmation letter. They won't perform a circularization. So if it is clearly mentioned that they are not going to perform a circularization, and since uh, it's clearly mentioned that they will not perform a circularization, and you are still writing that I will perform a circularization, that means you don't know what the scenario is, and you won't get marks. Okay, this is what uh, alerting to the scenario means. So apart from four, number five, calculate payable days compared with previous years, investigate difference. Then select a sample of GRNs before year end, compare with purchase invoice to ratio and record it in correct period. Reconcile purchase ledger control account to list of balances. Okay, so you can also not write this point because uh, there has been no reconcil reconciliation performed. So you can write for a sample of payables ask client staff or you can perform it yourself to perform supplier statement reconciliations and investigate any differences. Okay, they are not performing supplier statement reconciliations. That means what is being sent by the supplier and what they think is the payable, they're not, not reconciling. So you can ask them to perform supplier statement reconciliation and invest investigate any significant difference. It is not necessary. It is not necessary that you write ask client staff to perform supplier statement reconciliation for a sample of payables. You can write for a sample of payables, perform supplier statement reconciliation, investigate any significant difference. Okay. Hmm. Select a sample of your end payable balance, agree back to supporting documentation to ensure existence.
And one more point with respect to receivables and payables, both. Review post year end payments to suppliers to ensure payable balance at year end was accurate, right? Like if there is receivable, you can see post year end receipts from customers because if customers are paying after their end, that means the receivable created was correct. And if there is no post year end receipt from customer, that means receivable balance was incorrect. Same with payables. If someone is payable at year end, they should be made payment post year end. So review post year end payments to suppliers to ensure payable balance was accurate because if you're making payments to suppliers, that means the payable balance at year end was correct. But if you're not making any payments to suppliers, that means the year end pay payable balance was doughty. So for receivable or for payable, you can write this that review post year end payments because if we have created a receivable, there should be some post year end receipts. Similarly, if we have created a payable, there should be some post year end payments. So this is with the way you can verify the payable receivables as well, okay? Please copy this. Okay, next part, discuss substantive procedures to auditors should perform to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence in relation to redundancy provision. Now, provision always comes up in the exam. Any provision will come. And, you know, in provision, the handout, review adequacy of disclosure to ensure an accordance with IS-37, cast the total of provision to ensure arithmetic accuracy, obtain written representation from management to confirm provision, review board minutes, okay? So... This is the provision for reorganization, restructuring redundancy, review adequacy of disclosures to ensure compliance with IS-37, review board minutes to ensure discussion on provision regarding shop closure, obtain written representation from management to confirm completeness of provision, cost breakdown of provision to ensure calculation is correct, review announcement to ensure announced before year end, review supporting documents to ensure decision formally announced. Okay, you can write any five of these and gain these five marks. Okay, so there's no need to copy again. Uh, you have uh, this uh, handout. This is a very key handout again. Okay. So we will move towards the last part. Okay.
the final audit is uh, now nearing completion and you are reviewing the financial statements. The directors have told you that they have decided against including the redundancy provision of 1.8 million in the financial statements for the year ended 31st May 2005 as the closure of shop will not take place until September. Now have a look at this case. In May, year end is 31st May, right? So in May, the management decided to close down the shop. Announcement was made on website on 28th May. Before your end, staff informed timetable for closure. All 30 to staff are to be made redundant. Redundancy provision of 1.8 million is included in the draft financial statements for the year ended 31st May. Till here, everything seems okay, and closure will take place in September after year end. The final audit is now nearing completion, and management have told you that they have decided against including the redundancy provision of 1.8 million in the financial statements for the year ended 31st May as the closure of shop will not take place until September. Now, they did make a provision, but now finally they are saying that we will not include the redundancy provision in the financial statements in 31st May 2005 year end. Why? Because they are saying closure will take place in September. So they have decided against including the provision. Discuss the issue and describe the impact on audit report if this issue remains unresolved. Okay, so discuss the issue and impact on audit report if the issue remains unresolved. Okay, so first of all, this is not a subsequent event question because you are not given any case of fire or inventory damage or stuff. And uh, there are no three requirements that whether FS need amendment, impact on audit report and audit procedures. Okay, remember the subsequent event question that uh, there is uh, the first requirement, uh, whether FS need amendment, audit procedures on this amendment, impact on audit report. There is not this requirement. There is just a single case that management is not including the provision because they are saying that uh, the shop closure will take place in September. So just need to discuss the issue and impact on audit report, okay? The management, discuss the issue first, decided to close the shop and made announcement prior to year end. But they are saying that uh, they will not include redundancy provision as closure will take place after your end. Since announcement was made before year end, provision must be made, and if it is not made, provision will be understated and profit overstated okay this is discuss the issue it's not the is10 that uh, whether fs need amendments so or i wrote the issue under is and it's adjusting or non-adjusting event then three audit procedures then impact on it but no it's just asking that we made an announcement before the year end but the shop closure will take after year end. So management is saying we won't include provision. So discuss the issue. I wrote the issue that what was the issue that they decided to close the shop, made announcement before year end, but they are saying that we won't include provision. And if they will not include provision, the provision will be understated and profit will be overstated. Okay. Discuss the issue and impact on audit report. Now, before calculating impact on audit report, I need to calculate materiality because without calculating materiality, I cannot state impact on audit report. Okay. The matter represents issue is 1.8 million and profit is 22.8 million. Seven point nine per cent of profit which means it is material but not pervasive 
hence a qualified opinion will be issued a basis for qualified opinion paragraph will be added that explains reason for this qualified okay so you have discussed the issue and you have stated the impact on audit report and obviously before that you need to calculate materiality this ends our question and ends our complete past paper of march june 2024 okay please copy and that's it